victim's chin is placed on the lower bar and the cap is forced down by the screw. First the teeth are crushed down into their sockets and crush the surrounding bone. Finally the brain squirts out of the fragmented skull. <laughs> This is the chopping block here. Here's the chopping block. Oh my god, and they chop people's heads. Let me see what this said. A suitable for the removal of any member of the human body. Yeah. This is brutal. The victim is prolonged by force of the winch until an inconceivable length that comes of the dislocation and extrusion of every joint in the arms and legs, and of course of the ripping and detachment of the muscles of limbs, thorax, and abdomen. Just pulls you apart. The victim, naked, was stretched out supine on the ground with his limbs spread and tied to stakes. Stout wooden cross pieces were placed under the wrist, elbows, ankles, knees, and hips. The executioner then smashed limb after limb with the iron tire edge of the wheel. Thereafter, the shattered limbs were braided into spokes of the wheel and the victim raced it up horizontally, horizontally to the top of a pole. Holy shit. The prisoner was bound by the neck, feet, and hands and lacerated by the executioner in a horizontal position as in a coit coi, coi, or vertical. This punishment used to have clear religious connotations. Often the punishment was also exposed to public scorn. It, could, it consisted of hanging from a beam by the feet, face down and with legs open, to the inmate and begin to saw from one side to another from the crotch down. Owing to his inverted position, which assures ample oxygenation of the brain, the victim doesn't lose consciousness until the saw reaches the navel. Oh my god! See this? Prisoners were raised with their hands tied behind their back, and lifting them, their body weight would cause dislocation of the humerus bone, the clavicle bone, and the shoulder blades. The torture could be even as a vigil, the goal of this instrument is not to cause death or serious physical injury, but to break the spirit of the interrogated captive. Through a complicated system of pulleys and with the help of a metal belt fixed around the base, the prisoner is suspended over the point of a pyramid, precisely at the height of the anus. Oh, look it. Anus, vagina, or scrotum, according to the tormentors. The intended effort of this kind of cage was to expose the prisoner to public humiliation and shame as well as inducing fear of death. The cages were built in such a way that the head was practically immobile, but the rest of their body could move. 
with some difficulty, passing through the openings. As the, as the cages were hung at a considerable height, the tempta temptation to slip out of them disappeared when faced with the huge drop. But the insecure situation caused by the openings on the base meant that the prisoner could not rest for a second for fear of falling. Pris prisoners were kept in the cages for days or weeks. They would usually succumb to starvation or other weather conditions. cavity, the spikes at the end would irreversibly rip the walls of the mouth, the intestines, or the inside of the vagina. It was used in the mouth against preaching heroics, in the anus against homosexuals, and the vagina against women accused of having sexual intercourse with the devil or her family. Also called the friend's foot, the intention was to keep the head erect at all times. In attempting to rest the head, the palms would sink into the chin and the chest. It was used occasionally in prisons with the most rebellious and unruly captives.